Whether it's tiny on the micro scale or large on the macro scale, energy is at the center of all motion. When we talk about energy, we talk about the ability to do work. Energy can be quantified. We measure it in joules. A key characteristic of energy is that it can change forms from potential to kinetic. The total amount of energy stays the same, but the form changes. Potential energy is how we store energy, so energy can take on the form of elastic, gravitational potential, chemical energy, or nuclear energy. Kinetic energy is how we use our energy, or its energy in motion. It takes the form of motion, thermal energy, sound energy, radiant energy, or electrical energy. Let's take a deeper look at these different forms of energy. Let's start by looking at how we store our potential energy. Elastic energy is energy stored in objects that are stretched and compressed, such as springs and rubber. Gravitational potential energy is energy stored by lifting or storing an object off of ground level. Chemical energy is energy stored in the molecular bonds of chemicals. Nuclear energy is energy stored in the nucleus of an atom and released through nuclear fusion, which is atoms coming together, or nuclear fission, which is atoms breaking apart. We use kinetic energy. Another way to think of this is energy in motion. Motion energy is energy used to move an object. Sometimes the term motion energy and kinetic energy are used interchangeably. We use energy to heat things up through thermal energy. This is energy in the form of heat. Energy can be used to create sound. Sound energy is energy in the form of sound waves. Radiant energy is energy in the form of light or any form of electromagnetic wave. This even includes radio waves. Electrical energy is energy caused by the movement of electrons. This is also the form of energy that you probably use most on a daily basis. To help understand these transformations of energy, we're going to use the parts from Station 1 of the Science of Energy to collect some data. Follow these steps to collect your Super Ball bounce data. 1. Measure the mass of the Super Ball and record it in the data table. Use a small measuring cup to keep the ball from rolling off, but remember to zero the scale. 2. Drop the Super Ball onto a hard surface from a height of 1 meter. 3. Measure the Super Ball's rebound height. 4. Repeat steps 2 and 3 for two more trials. One person drops the ball, one person measures the height. 5. Calculate the average rebound height and record it in the data table. The scale will give you the ball's mass in grams, you need it in kilograms. So we need to transfer from grams over to kilograms. We start at the basic unit, gram. To get to kilograms, that's one, two, three places to the left. Three place values to the left. So if the mass from the scale was 16.3 grams, I move my decimal three place values to the left. If I leave a gap, that gap gets replaced with a zero. Wherever my finger, pointer, pencil ended, that's where the decimal ends up. So 16.3 grams is about 0.16 kilograms. You'll measure the rebound height three times, and then you'll add up those three trials and divide by three to get the average. My average in this case is 0.37 meters, or about 37 centimeters. For Sphere 1, you'll follow the same steps. Measure the mass of Sphere 1 and record it in the data table. Drop Sphere 1 onto a hard surface from a height of 1 meter. 3. Measure Sphere 1's rebound height. 4. Repeat those steps for two more trials. And then 5. Calculate the average rebound height and record it in the data table. Sphere 2 works the same way. Measure the mass of Sphere 2 and record it in the data table. Drop Sphere 2 onto a hard surface from a height of 1 meter. Measure Sphere 2's rebound height. Repeat these steps for two more trials, then calculate the average rebound height and record it in the data table. Follow these steps to collect the yo-yo portion of your data. 1. Unwind the yo-yo and measure the string's length. Record it in the data table. 2. Measure the yo-yo's unwound mass. Record it in the data table. 3. Rewind the yo-yo and measure its wound mass. Record it in the data table. 4. 
Slip the yo-yo onto your finger and drop it from one meter above the ground. Don't push down on the yo-yo, don't pull up on the yo-yo, just let it drop and dangle. Five, measure the yo-yo's rebound height. Record it in the data table. Six, repeat steps four through five for two more trials. And then seven, calculate the average rebound height and record it in the data table. To collect the data for your toy car lab, follow these simple steps. One, measure the mass of the toy car. Record it in the data table. Two, pull your toy car back 10 centimeters and release it. Start measuring the time when you release the car. Three, stop measuring the time when the car comes to a stop. Record it in the data table. Four, measure the car's displacement. Record it in the data table. Five, repeat steps two through four for two more trials. Step six, calculate the average displacement in time. And then seven, calculate the average velocity. To calculate the average velocity, divide the average displacement by the average time. 